Hello, my name is Josh Barrows, and we are here in the Edith Mortensen Center at Augustana University with Mayor Mike Huther. I am from Helena, Montana. I'm a sophomore senator on ASA and represent Civitas as well. And we would just like to provide a warm welcome to Mayor Huther's listening and, welcome, listening and learning sessions so that he can hear dialogue and questions from the Augustana campus. Thank you. My name is Hannah Norum. I am a junior government, religion, and French major from Houston, Texas. And um, I would like to get the discussion started by asking Mayor Huther, um, what role do you see Augustana playing in the growing, diverse Sioux Falls community? Very good. Uh, well, first, hey, thank you for inviting me here. And, and uh, Joel, if you can, uh, I mean, we do have some students here, which is, which is great. And uh, uh, first of all, thanks for the, the, the opener. I appreciate it. And, and I think the, the, the thing that's probably most important about today's visit is that uh, we do have universities, colleges, tech schools that play a dramatic role in Sioux Falls. Uh, it's an economic development driver in a big, big way. I mean, we've got thousands and thousands of students that are you know, learning within our town. Uh, then you've got certainly you know, the faculty and and the coaches and, and all the other workers that, that are on those campuses, whether it be you know, Augie or USF or Southeast Tech, uh, University Center, whatever it would be, that's important. But for me, uh, and especially right now, uh, one of the key drivers uh, and one of the real reasons that we're so excited about people like you is that um, we've got the lowest unemployment rate in the country in Sioux Falls. Uh, CNN just reported that. And uh, you've got 1.9% unemployment rate. I've got 3,000 job openings right now. And you are a conduit of, you know, we've got good people like you that are getting trained, getting educated. And when you're done, you'll be ready to work, uh, ready to really, you know, take on that, that career. And I'd love all of you to stay in Sioux Falls and take one of those 3,000 jobs, uh, or two of them, whatever you want. Um, but it's, it's really, really important for us. And, and at Augie, um, I know that we've got a very, very high rate of placement within the city of Sioux Falls when it comes to Augie graduates. And I think USF and University Center and Southeast Tech have, have that, same, um, that same pattern of success. So again, it, it's great to be here. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, this program only works if you talk. Uh, I mean, I could talk all day, and then the people of Sioux Falls will get awfully bored. But um, would anybody have any questions or, or comments? And, and what I'd ask is, tell us where you're from, and then uh, just engage me. Uh, anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Matthew Schilling. I'm from Mitchell, South Dakota. Um, question about a story in January. Argus reporter and former Augustana student Megan Raposa yes. asked a question about school choice. And there never quite was a clear response on your stance about school choice and the implications it would have on those of us in that are looking at going into education. Yes. Can you clarify your stance on school choice for us? You bet. Be happy to. And, and if I can, uh, that's, that's a great way to start. Um, and I will be brutally honest with you, young people. Uh, I was disappointed in that, that story. And I didn't know Megan was an Augie grad. Uh, uh, but I was disappointed in that story uh, because one of the things that I do as, as your mayor um, is I do proclamations all the time. Uh, in fact, I do about 70 of them a year. And in this particular case, I was asked by the head of uh, um, Sioux Falls Catholic Schools whether I would do a proclamation. And so um, we got the information from uh, that, that gentleman. Uh, I read it. It was positive in nature. It wasn't political. Uh, I didn't see any undertones of, uh, of um, you know, any, anything that would create some, some drama or controversy. And so ultimately, I, I signed it like I do the other 70. And um, what ended up happening is that uh, I did get a call from the Argus leader uh, asking if I would, if I would ask, answer some questions, and I did. 
I answered four questions on that topic. Um, and none of them got into my feelings on school choice, um, on you know, the funding of public education versus private education and, and things like that. Uh, so I was disappointed by, you know, ultimately how that came about, especially the headline. Uh, because the headline basically um, uh, questioned um, how I felt about education, specifically public education. And so now I'm going to get to your answer. Um, I've got a 20 plus year record of supporting not only education, but also public education. Uh, my wife Cindy and I, uh, we were the uh, co-chairs of the last two opt-out campaigns for public schools in Sioux Falls. Um, the first one failed, the second one won. And uh, what that was able to do was to create an infusion of new money into Sioux Falls public schools. Um, also, we have done things like uh, we were the heads of the uh, Washington High School Booster Club. Uh, we've been tennis coaches. We've been uh, umpires, uh, referees. Uh, we've invested uh, uh, well over $300,000 of our own money towards public education um, type of um, causes here in the state of South Dakota. Uh, so here's my answer. Uh, I am in favor of all education. All of it. I don't care if it's public or it's private. And if you understood my, my background, you'd understand this even more. Uh, my mom and dad were divorced when I was in the fifth grade. My dad drank too much. We had no money. Uh, I was really struggling. And my way up and my way out was through education. It was a big deal for me. My, my teachers, my counselors, my coaches, uh, they were there for me uh, to help, you know, give me some confidence and motivate me and, and help me become successful. Um, I was the uh, vice president of South Dakota State University as a sophomore. Um, I remember on my, my car at the time, we had stickers when I was the SA vice president. We had stickers, very simple. Education expensive, try ignorance. Education expensive, try ignorance. So I do really get uh, a little juiced up when somebody challenges me on my um, thoughts on public education, private education, what should be funded, how it should be funded, things like that. I think all education in South Dakota, whether it's public or it's private, they are all underfunded, all of them. Um, you know, there were, when, when I was in fifth grade or sixth grade at Yankton, uh, whether it be Yankton grade schools, Yankton middle schools, Yankton high schools. We did so many more things back then than we do for young people today. Because what we've done is we've prioritized things, uh, I think, in, in the wrong way. And I think the, one of the first places that we've cut was in education. Uh, and again, whether it be public or private, uh, I think it's all underfunded. Now let's talk about choice. To me, it's one of the great things about uh, not only our, our city and our, our state and our country, but you do have, it's your choice. If you want to go to a private school, go to a private school. If you want to go to a public school, go to a public school. Uh, it, it's, it's your choice. My daughter Kylie went to Washington High School, and we go to Holy Spirit Catholic Church. Okay? Do you get that? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What, what was that about? Uh, we strongly considered going to a private high school for, for Kylie, but ultimately she went to Washington High School. And then when she graduated, she looked at all the different colleges and universities around here. And then where did she go? A private school, the College of St. Benedict, St. John's University in Minnesota. 
So again, kind of a long-winded uh, answer to your question. And, and if I didn't answer it uh, the way that you wanted or, or as detail-oriented as you want, uh, I'll try it again. But one of the things that I would caution all of you, and I'd caution the people of, of Sioux Falls, is some of these answers are not so simple. They, they can't be just eight to 10 words uh, in, in a snippet to get someone's thoughts on a particular topic like school choice or, or how to fund education or what should be prioritized. Uh, but so often we want to box somebody into a certain paragraph or a certain comment and ultimately that uh, then so, so people can make up their mind. Um, and here, you know, that was a great question. I was not expecting it. Great question. And, uh, but it's one that I'm very, very passionate about. And I still don't even know if I answered it for you. Uh, but, but again, because it's not that simple. It's not that simple. It depends. It depends on the policy. It depends on the time. It depends on, on this or on that. So uh, um, if there's a specific thing that you want to ask me uh, about it, I'll do my best to answer it. But, but that's a pretty long-winded answer. But I think it's a great way to start. Uh, I think it is because it'll give you some perspective on on what it's like to be a, even a public servant, whether it be the mayor, the governor, a senator, or, or a president. Um, uh, right now, so much of what we, how you folks, uh, as well as others, are trying to get their news, it's, 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 it's uh, more, you know, it's done on, on the cell phone or the iPhone or, or on Facebook, and it's quick hitting, and it's short. And, and if, you, if it doesn't capture your attention or others' readers' attention right away, then you don't go on to the next two to three to, to five to ten paragraphs either. And you're not alone. But that's why it's so hard. Um, and right now, clickbait's a big deal. You know, it's all about clickbait. How do, how do you garner their attention on that article so that they at least click on it, and then maybe they'll read the first paragraph and then maybe the second. So again, I don't fault... Um, uh, the Argus for the way that they, they kind of um, got the reader's attention on that one. But uh, I certainly was disappointed in not only the article, but, um, but um, you know, some of, the, some of the, uh, the comments that came after that. Good job, though. Proud of you. That was a tough one. You got any other tough ones? This is a good one. Uh, anything. Oh, boy. This will be the short. Thank you. Folks, again, ask me anything. Don't worry. Don't worry. You can't ask me a, a bad question or, or, or you, you can't do it. I'm here for you. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. And one thing, one thing that, may, that I can promise you, and it's the only promise I'll make, we will agree to disagree at times. Okay? That's okay. That's okay. Go. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious about, I know Sioux Falls. Tell, tell us your name. Oh, sorry. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm originally from St. Louis. I moved here Welcome, in September. Thank you. Um, and my wife works at um, Lutheran Social Services yes. with teaching refugees. And Sioux Falls has historically accepted a lot of refugees. Yeah. Looking forward at the next four years, we're going to be getting a lot less. What impact do you think that this has, will have on Sioux Falls? Well, it's going to have a major impact. Uh, and... One of the things, I didn't, remember I told you we have 3,000 job openings right now, 1.9% unemployment rate. The way we used to fill jobs in South Dakota, uh, how many of you are from South Dakota? Would you just raise your hand real quick? Okay, here's the way we used to do it in the olden days, jobs in South Dakota. What we do is we'd go to the farmers and the ranchers and the small towns and we'd try to do our best to recruit you to come to Sioux Falls or, or Rapid City or Mitchell or whatever what it would be. Okay, well, then of course the family farms got smaller or, or less folks on there, and then we started to recruit uh, around this area. Okay, well, Governor Dugard, to his credit, and others, we're trying to fill jobs all over the state right now. Well, we just got a study back, and the study said if you're going to fill jobs in South Dakota and in Sioux Falls at the rate that you need, you're going to have to look far beyond our borders. And the borders weren't the state of South Dakota borders. It was the United States borders. We have to look beyond that. So these immigrants, these, uh, these refugees, these people that are willing to work for a better life uh, and bring their talents 
Uh, we need that to continue in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota. We do. Uh, now, certainly, I don't want to get into too much political conversation here. You know, certainly, the, you want to make sure that you vet the people as, as best you can to make sure that we keep our, our city safe, our state safe, our country safe. But yes, it is something that uh, as, a, as a state, we have to figure out. We're also an egg state. We're an egg state. And, and we're becoming more and more of a value-added egg state. So many of the jobs uh, also are being filled by people who, who are willing to do this, this work. And uh, many of them do come from out of our country. Uh, so it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time. I, uh, uh, I, am, I think if you look at our state, it's, it's made up of nothing but immigrants, okay? Uh, but certainly it's a unique time. And uh, the, debates, the debate is incredibly volatile right now. Uh, it is. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll get through it. Uh, but, but that's my thought. It's, and I, and I, um, I don't want to speak for the governor, but, but we do need workers. And uh, we need them not only from Augie, but we need them from all over the country and all over the world. Yeah. Follow up? No. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Others? Anything? Oh, I beg of you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, my name is Rachel Pollan. Hi, Rachel. I'm originally from Omaha, but I live here now. Um, with the uh, topic of needing college students to take jobs and things like that, yes. um, what kind of growth in higher level education jobs are we looking at in Sioux Falls in the next few years? Well, uh, Rachel, one of the great things about Sioux Falls, uh, and it's one of the things that, that really helped us through the recession, um, but one of the great things is that, you know, if I had a stool right now, I'd turn it upside down and I talk about the multiple legs on, on the economic development stool that we have in Sioux Falls. You know, we certainly, uh, uh, we have agriculture, uh, we've got healthcare, uh, we've got research, we've got financial services, we've got manufacturing, uh, we've got uh, construction, uh, we've got IT, we've got warehousing, we've got management, we've got blue collar, white collar, gray collar, whatever it would be. Right now, the jobs are growing at a pace that uh, you know, we're, just, we're just thrilled by. So what I will tell you, Rachel, is that there's opportunities across all fronts, including higher level jobs, okay? There are. Uh, and again, our challenge is we're having a hard time filling those. It's not just the, um, uh, the, the jobs that are at, at the, the restaurants or, or the bars in town. Uh, certainly, there's, there's jobs there, and there's jobs in retail, certainly, and there's jobs in manufacturing, certainly, and there's jobs in, in health care, you know, certainly, all, all, there's, but there's jobs across the entire spectrum, there are, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's a really good time. For example, you know, when it came to health care in Sioux Falls, we were the place where people came for their health care needs, okay? Well, now we threw something else into the mix. It's called research, okay? We want to find the cure for breast cancer in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We want to find the cure for juvenile diabetes in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We want to use genome research to find potential cures for this disease or causes for that disease. And so those are some very, very high level jobs that we need to fill. And if we can't fill them internally, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and recruit them at the highest level across the country and across the world, whether it be Avera, whether it be Sanford, whatever it would be. So yes, there's, there, there are those opportunities. And so when you graduate from Augie, um, we would like your first choice to be Sioux Falls, okay? Um, and, and again, I don't know if there's ever been a better time to... Um, to, to find that job in Sioux Falls or to improve your job in Sioux Falls, okay? I, ate it, I just ate at Nikki's with my, with my nephew for lunch, okay? Um, and this is maybe not gonna apply so much to your question in terms of high-level jobs, however. I'm walking out and there was a gentleman there who I've not met in town and so I, I introduced myself to him. And I asked him what he did 
And he said, he said, Mayor, you know, I want to get a better job. And I, I, I said, I, I go, there's not a better time to get a better job than right now, okay? Because everybody is hungry for good workers. Uh, and they're willing to pay more. They're willing to offer better benefits. And what's one of the wake-up calls that we've, we're receiving, especially from the millennial generation, is that you better create a good work environment too. You better. You better. Uh, it's something that I, 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 I really admire about the millennial generation. Okay? You, you, I think you folks get it. It's a different... When I graduated from South Dakota State, sorry, but when I, when I graduated from State, uh, what I did is I graduated, then I went and I found a job, and then I moved to that town. Okay? Nowadays, here's the way that it works. And I, I, I like it. What the millennial generation does is they actually decide where they want to live first. They want a high quality place to live. And then they'll go find a job. I love that. I love that. But that's one of the reasons why we've done so much to try to make Sioux Falls the place to live. That was, that's one of the uh, highest priorities that I had when I was elected mayor, and we certainly have tried to, to do that, and I think we've accomplished it in, in, in many ways. We've just named the number two place in America for, mil for millennials. Um, so I, th I think we're doing it. Things like uh, the event center. Well, you know, Dirks Bentley just, just played on Sunday night, packed house. Uh, there's others. If you don't like Dirks Bentley, there's others that we've had here too. Um, but things like the new, you know, the new indoor pool. Uh, it, it snows in Sioux Falls here. It does, and it's cold, and there's wind. Uh, but it'd be nice to go do something other than just eat during the wintertime. So, you know, things like the new indoor pool, uh, the bike trail is just, is just wonderful, and, and things like the Sanford uh, Sports Complex and, and so much more. We're trying to make this a place to live. And then the one thing that I know millennials as well as retirees love is a vibrant downtown. Thank you for nodding your head. I appreciate it. You want a vibrant downtown. You want to be where, where the action is, where people are, where there's you know, uh, things going on and, and you can congregate and meet and, and enjoy and, and have a beer or a burger or a soda, whatever it would be. And our downtown, folks, is hopping right now. It is, it's hopping. And uh, just, just thrilled by it. So again, sorry, long-winded answer. I'll try to do shorter things, but I hope you guys have some good, give me some more questions, please, and, or comments. Just talk to me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, can I ask for a clarification? Sure, like, absolutely. Um, you said that the number two place in America for millennials, it was on a list for that. Um, do you know who published that list? I don't, not off the top of my head. Uh, Heather could get, uh, I'll, I'll have Heather get that for you, and uh, then you can share it with the, with the, with the, with the team. We have, uh, uh, what happens about once a week, once every two weeks, there's a new publication, whether it be MSNBC, CNN, uh, this, this, whatever, or this, what, they'll, they'll put Sioux Falls in there for something. Uh, and, and so, yeah, and, and they all have their own ranking me mechanisms and how they determined that we were number two. Uh, so, um, but yeah, there's all these things that we're doing, and, and I like our chances right now for millennials. I do. Can I ask you something, though? Mm -hmm. Tell me what we need to do better, because I think you're questioning it. Um, being from I Omaha, I got a smile out of her. Being from Omaha, and I just I love it. I, I lo go. It feels a little small town to me sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. I, I love it. Um, take, take it away. <laughs> so I just part of me kind of questions, but like I, I having been in Sioux Falls for three years now, I kind of. I can see why it's on a list, but I, I kind of want to do the research and figure out why it's on that list, um, since it is a little bit smaller Midwest city. Spot on. <laughs> I, I think she's spot on. I, I think she is. We are not Omaha. We are smaller than Omaha. We're smaller than Lincoln. We're smaller than the cities. We are. But I would love you to compare the growth uh, of those cities and ours over the last seven years. So yeah, we may not be there yet, uh, 
but the 88th busiest event center in the world for touring events was not in Omaha. Where was it at? I'm guessing Sioux Falls. Yeah, it was not Sioux Falls. That's a good <laughs> question. It is. So we're doing things to make us more attractive for millennials and retirees and entrepreneurs and uh, a young and old, rich or poor, black or white alike. We're doing that. And so you're right. We're, uh, we may not be quite as active as Omaha or Lincoln or Des Moines just yet, but I like our chances. I do. Good job. See, that was perfect. That was per what is the one thing in Omaha that you wish we had here in Sioux Falls? Um, you can answer that. I love it. You, know, you go first, and then I'm going to come to you. Uh, I would say the um, pedestrian bridge that they just put in. Mm. Um, do you know anything about that? Coach me. So the Missouri River is, runs right along the yes. east side of Omaha between Omaha and Council Bluffs, and they put in just a plain walking bridge so you can go back and forth between the two cities without having to get in your car, drive, and find a place to park. So where do you want us to put a bridge? <laughs> um, just, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like... Um, and, and that wasn't meant to be sarcastic. What, no, I understand. What, what, uh, what, what, what could we do that would kind of replicate that feel? Um, it's, the feel is kind of there with like Falls Park and the area there. It, um, there's just been a lot of development in Omaha around that spot and yes. a lot of the development I've seen like kind of more farther into downtown as opposed to by Falls Park and just yes. kind of that, like the, the natural aspect of it, I guess, instead of just focusing on the city part. Good job. We, we just bought uh, 10 acres of land from Burlington Northern right in the heart of our downtown. It's a uh, eighth and railroad kind of in that area there. And that is, you're gonna see that develop in a grand way uh, so that we, and it will look more like you know downtown Omaha which I do enjoy by the way a, a lot so good job and you could you can answer that question too. are you from Omaha I'm from Omaha thank you tell me your name please uh, Shelby Shelby welcome uh, coaches what would we if you could make something from Omaha bring it here to Sioux Falls what would it be the zoo <laughs> <laughs> okay now have you been to our zoo yeah okay and and you're right. Our zoo is not as big and as grand as you, as the zoo in Omaha. Um, uh, so you would you would want to replicate the size of that zoo here in Sioux Falls? Well, maybe not replicate the size, but um, just like the feel of it is more like authentic, I think. Yes. In Omaha. And this is just like cages with animals in it. Yep. And yep. yep. And, and Sh Shelby. Yeah. Shelby. The... Um, the, um, the zoo board, as well as, you know, Elizabeth who runs the zoo and, and the citizens of Sioux Falls, we are trying to invest more and more money into our zoo. Um, um, for the monkey exhibit, for example, that's one of the newest ones that we've done to try to make it more, less, ca or less cagey. Um, one of the challenges that we do face, whether it be Omaha, whether it be Lincoln, whether it be New York City or, or Sioux Falls, is you're trying to find that balance in terms of where, where to spend your money. You are. Um, you know, because Omaha, one of the things that they're really fa struggling with, and Shelby, you may not care about this, but, but their uh, infrastructure, especially their water and sewer lines in Omaha, they're really, really, really hurting. And so, yeah, it's a lot of fun to focus on zoos and, and bike trails and walkways and, and event centers and things like that. It's a lot of fun to do that, but you better not be ignoring that basic infrastructure of your town either. And that's where these, uh, these public servants get into these battles. Uh, you do. And so, uh, but we are trying to make the zoo even better and we need to, but it is, uh, it's one of those poorly things, what do you do? But I love that, thank you, thank you. Because I've, uh, I've got a grandson, I do, and he just went to the zoo for the very first time. And now he's only nine months old, but as he gets older, that zoo is gonna become more and more important to him, uh, as well as his, his mom and his dad and grandma and grandpa too, so good job, thank you, thank you. Do you have another question, Shelby? Thank you, well welcome to our town. Thanks. Thank you. Will you are you a junior, senior? Uh, junior, but I'm graduating this year. 
you're graduating this year. Yeah. So can I ask you to hold that? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a tough one. <laughs> okay. Uh, any chances we can keep you in Sioux Falls when you graduate? Nope. Okay. <laughs> and, and tell us why. Um, it's too small. Okay. Um, there's Again. not, yeah, I don't know. It's not for me, I guess. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. But we're going to keep trying. We are. Uh, I, there are some folks who really relish the, the, the smaller city feel, but then there's others like you, Shelby, that, no, you want um, uh, something bigger, uh, and, and I respect that, yeah. My daughter, Kylie, I never thought there was any chance in the world she was going to stay in, in Sioux Falls or South Dakota, uh, but she has, and she's doing incredibly well, and, and we're certainly blessed because she's seven minutes away from my bride and, 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 and me, and, and uh, so it's, it's wonderful. But thank you for being here for four years. Appreciate it. Thank you. Others, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Ashley from Mitchell, South Dakota. Hi, as far as Augustana's involvement in the community, what do you see that you particularly like? And then for in the future, how would you like us to play a bigger role in the community? Good job, Ashley. Thank you. Um, well, Augie, Augie is uh, one of the, the pillars here. They've been around a long time. Uh, certainly have made their mark. Um, I'm a uh, President Rob Oliver fan because he was the co-chair for my campaign twice. So I especially have some, you know, deep down respect for, for President Rob. But I do love what, what he has done in terms of not only investing more and more into Augie, uh, but also increasing the enrollment here at Augie, but also being a good steward too. Getting not only the students, but also the, uh, the, the, the faculty and others to invest more of their time, their talent, and, and their money in, in, into the city uh, and into the citizens. But, but what, 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 I would, what I would ask of all of you uh, at Augie is that there are a bunch of people that still have a bunch of uh, needs in this community. You know, uh, not everybody's looking for a hand out. Not a, they're, they're not. They're looking for a hand up. Um, you know, talking about uh, uh, immigrants or refugees or folks like that, we have, we have more and more folks that are moving into Sioux Falls, for example. About 35% of the Sioux Falls public schools now are, have students of diversity. And they may be able to speak English, but their moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, they may not be able to. And so that's just one example is that, you know, could you... Could students, could faculty at Augie, USF, or University Center, where it would be, could they play a, a greater role in terms of um, lifting people up? Um, you know, we've got, we've got some grand uh, church, grand churches right here on campus or, or near campus. We do. And uh, about 90% of the time, they're, they're empty. Okay? But we've got people that would love to... Um, celebrate their faith, uh, but they're looking for a place to do that, okay? Wouldn't it be great if, if Augie opened up maybe not only a church, but doesn't even have to be a church? How many of these grand buildings here on Augie's campus are empty 90% of the time? A bunch of them. Well, what if you allowed, uh, you know, some, some groups to come in here and, and celebrate their faith or or hold a, hold a meeting or whatever it would be. There's all these different things that, as a community, uh, that, that, that we can do. And one thing, too, you have to understand, Augustana is your own little community. You're, you're, you're a town. In fact, you're one of the big, sorry, you're going to love this one. Augie's one of the biggest cities in all of South Dakota. You are. Yeah, what, 2,000, 2000 strong? Well, you're one of the largest cities in South Dakota, 2,000. It's, it's a big town. It's a big town. So. So yeah, uh, the things that this town could do, the Augie town, to make a difference for others is, uh, is a big deal. Uh, and again, I, not to harp on this, but we need you all to stay. We need you to stay. We need you to help fill these jobs. Uh, we, need you to, we need you to do that and raise your families here and, and work and play here and, and things like that. But um, what do you think that Augie students could do or, or Augie faculty could do to make a difference? 
Um, I think we do a good job of service, but um, making that known to students, I think we could do a better job of because there's a ton of service opportunities, whether that be a mentor or go serve at the banquet. I think if we be intentional about looking for those opportunities, we could make a bigger impact. Good job. Uh, I love it. There, there are these people who, who want to work at the highest level. They want to improve their, their, um, uh, the, their, their job opportunity, whatever, but they don't know how to interview. They don't know how to uh, write a resume. Uh, they may not even know how to dress for that, for that interview. And those are things that, that you folks are not only learning to do, but you're already doing. And you could you know, uh, reach out to others and, and help them with that. And again, the service opportunities are, are huge. Um, we are a very vibrant town. Uh, we are. But not everybody is making six figures in Sioux Falls. They're not. They're not. We've got, uh, I think more and more, it's, and it's not only happening in Sioux Falls, but I think it's happening all across the country, uh, there's becoming a, a greater disparity between the haves and the have-nots. It is. The income disparity is, is widening. Uh, it is. And, it, and I think it's happening even here in Sioux Falls. Um, so, you know, anything that you can do to help lift people up to improve their, their ability would be, would be great. Um, I don't, know, I don't even know why I'm going to go here, but I, but I will. Um, Ashley. Yeah. Ashley. Ashley, I'm a Yankton boy. You're a Mitchell, you're a Mitchell Colonel? Uh, I went to Mount Vernon. You went to Mount Vernon? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I'm a Yankton buck. And um, I lived on kind of the poor side of Yankton, uh, East 12th Street when I was growing up. And we had some really, we had some families that struggled in the grandest way where, where I grew up. Well. Here I am, I'm the mayor of your town, and the mayor of Sioux Falls, and as I was driving to work today, I went to one of the, one of the trailer courts that we have here in, in Sioux Falls this morning. And uh, I, I drove in, and um, I drove around one of these trailer, co trailer courts, uh, trailer houses, and I looked at it and I go, oh man, there can be no one living in that one. And I'm driving by really slow, and all of a sudden, as I'm driving by, a head pops up and is looking at me. And so I kept driving, and this gentleman came out, and uh, we engaged each other. I said, hey, I'm your mayor. And he goes, I'm, he just moved here from Chicago. And uh, not only was he living in there, but his, uh, uh, his girlfriend, her two kids, and he just had his sister and his mom move here from Chicago because of the job opportunities. Okay, but I was looking at that trailer going, wow, is that safe? Is it sanitary? Is it decent? And here was the deal. It's all they could afford. And they're working. Sioux Falls, they were working. This family was working. In fact, some were working two jobs. But if I were to close that trailer down, where would these people move to? Okay? And so there's all these challenges that we face as a society. And so if you, you know, as you're, as you're, as you're leaving Augie, as you're uh, capturing your career opportunities, as you're, as you're being successful, one of the things that you learned at Augie, I know, is the value of stewardship, the value of giving back, and I would just ask you, don't ever lose sight of that because no matter what you do, as long as you're giving it, uh, whether it be your time, talent, or treasure, it is making a difference whether you're in Mount Vernon, whether you're in Mitchell, whether you're in Yankton, whether you're in Omaha, it will make a difference. Yeah. So good job. Keep it going, Ashley. Thank you. Yeah. And Augie, keep it going too. Yeah. Others, thoughts, questions? Thank you. Anything? Uh, thank you. Um, so hi, uh, my name's Kofi and I'm from That's Ghana. Great. And uh, my questions actually uh, relate to two things you've already touched on, um, affordable housing yes. um, and public transportation. I think um, those are two things that um, uh, really um, are important to millennials, uh, one, and, and then two, uh, to the more uh, disadvantaged um, uh, members of our community. And so I just want you to touch uh, briefly on 
um, what, what the city has done uh, in terms of public transportation. I know um, we, we have a, a great um, a mass transit system, um, ridership um, could be better, um, uh, but I know uh, there are also conversations to bring um, uh, some of the um, uh, riding um, apps and, and uh, firms into town like Uber and, and Lyft. And so if you can just tell us, you know, what's the progress on that? When can we expect to be, um, uh, uh, you know, hailing rides on, on Uber? And then for public transport, I mean, for affordable housing, I know, um, that I think it was uh, Candy Hansen and the Thrive Initiative yes. recently um, uh, you know, know that that you know public uh, affordable housing is one of the biggest uh, problems we face as a city. And so, what in your tenure has been done? What do you think can be done uh, better uh, on those two fronts? Kofi, thank you. Yep. You're very very eloquent. You got to stay in our town when you graduate. Uh, I'll try to be brief, but so here we go. Let's start with affordable housing. Uh, what have we done? We've invested more taxpayer dollars in affordable housing than we've ever done before. In fact, about five times as much. But it's been a fly on an elephant's butt. How's that for TV? <laughs> it has. It's been a fly on an elephant's butt. You're exactly right. Affordable housing has been a real challenge. And as your mayor, the challenge, I've been, I've been your mayor now for seven years. And the challenge since I've been your mayor has only become worse. And how can that be? How can that be? Because here's what's happened. The economy has been stimulated in a way that's never been probably done uh, before. Record-breaking construction, four straight years of record-breaking construction, lowest unemployment rate in, in, in America. We grew the city of Harrisburg last year in one year. We had 5,200 people move in to, to Sioux Falls. In three years time, we're gonna add Mitchell onto our town, three years town. We're gonna add Mitchell onto our town in three years, okay? So, Kofi, wh wh how does that make sense? Because here's what's happened. We've got all these people moving in, and so even the, the, um, those things that were more affordable, now they're all getting remodeled, they're getting redeveloped, they're getting tore down, they're repurposing those properties, and now it's becoming a more expensive place to live, okay? Rents are going up. Now we're building new condos, new apartments, new places to live at record levels. Last year was the biggest year we've ever done. It was a monster year. But when it comes to affordable housing, that has been a challenge to keep up. Uh, and I wish I had an answer for you, Kofi, in terms of this magic wand, uh, but it, it's, it's going to continue to be a challenge. And it's not just here. It's in places like Mitchell and Yankton and Rapid City and Aberdeen. Housing, affordable housing, is one of the greatest challenges that anybody faces in their, uh, in, in their life or, or as a family. Number two, public transportation. Kofi, again, I have been trying to tackle this for seven years because you were, I think you were a bit too kind in terms of saying we had a tremendous public transit. We do have, we have very, very good public transit, but here's the deal. You're held hostage in the city of Sioux Falls by the, because we only go so far and then we stop. We stop. We do. We do. And remember, we've, we added Harrisburg onto our town last year. Mitchell in three years, we're growing out, but yet public transportation, we're, we're, we're kind of, there's a boundary in terms of how far we could go. Because, because we're not investing enough money or making enough money into public transportation to allow us to add more routes, expand our coverage, add more times, things like that. Even though the millennials and people moving into town from Chicago or whatever are moving in. It's a real struggle. Now I'm just going to kind of give you a little lesson for all of you who want to be the next mayor or the next governor or the next president. Get ready for this one. And I'm going to come back to Uber. That'll be last. Okay? A little lesson for you. Okay? It's going to tie in kind of that zoo discussion. Okay? Um, there are only, there's, there's only so many dollars to spend. Okay? And most people think, well, we'll just go ahead and do, improve the zoo. 
add more routes to your public transportation, throw more money into affordable housing, build another indoor pool on the, on the other side of town, whatever it would be. The problem is there's limited taxpayer dollars that you can spend when you're in this role. And I'm gonna give you a little flavor now. My mom, remember, I, we grew up with nothing. My mom was the head nurse at the Human Services Center. Uh, it, so she wanted us to care for everybody, regardless of the race, creed, color, sexual orientation, income, how they spoke, how they dressed, mental, mental capacity, physical capacity, whatever it would be. That's how I was taught, okay? So I, I've been taught, I gotta care for everybody, Kofi, everybody. So paratransit, for example. These are folks that they don't have the ability to hop into their Nissan Titan truck and drive to their appointment or to, to the event center or to the city council meeting, whatever it would be. Here's the point. We charge about $3 for a paratransit ride. Okay, we charge about three bucks. Guess what it cost us to do it? $30. Very close. About 28. So you're going, how, how, how does that work? You know, how could we afford to do that anymore? And so you're, you struggle, Kofi, trying to figure out where to spend those valuable taxpayer dollars. Um, I've, I, I've taken some, some heat over the last seven years because I've actually been trying to raise fees or fares when it came to transportation because it's so out of balance to me. Uh, but again, then I'm raising fees on the most vulnerable, the folks who can't afford to pay it. And so it's, it's just always, always a struggle, it's always a challenge. Uh, so Kofi, until we address that, uh, that the revenues are dramatically lower than the expenses, and yet we've got all these other things that, that citizens of Sioux Falls want us to tackle, okay? Um, but I, we are certainly paying attention to it, not giving up on it, but we do need to do more. We do need to do more because 50% of our dollars is going to paratransportation, a paratransit, and 50% are going to uh, regular public transportation. That's an imbalance. That's an imbalance. And that's where, you know, people are going, but hey, I, I just moved out on the, on the far edge of town, Mayor, and I can't, I can't, I can't get to the bus. Uh, so that's, now let's talk about Uber. Uber, Lyft, whatever it would be, we're ready for it. We, we're ready for it. But the big challenge right now is that Uber does not want to follow, or they don't want to follow the sales tax collection things that we need to have happen here. And they're kind of challenging that, not only in Sioux Falls, but in, in other uh, um, cities across America. But we're ready for Lyft, we're ready for Uber. Uh, we value the, the competition and, and the ease and, and all that. So uh, we're ready for it too, Kofi, uh, but, but thank you. Those are great questions. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Shelby, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Anything else? Please, anything. Th oh, did you have one? Thank you. Thank you. Mm, hi, I am Nicolas. I hi am from Nicholas. Colombia. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you know, I have my reasons. I am here studying English, and I have my reasons for come here and not to other place. But the question, my question is, what can you say to people like me? Um, I mean, young students from other cultures or other countries uh, to invite them to come here and study their major or English. Well, I think we're embracing diversity uh, at, a, at a level that we've never done before for all kinds of reasons, and I think it's all good. Uh, it is. Um, uh, I think our quality of life is really good. Uh, so any mom or dad who is looking for a good place to send their sons or their daughters uh, or nieces or nephews, where it would be, I would encourage them to come to Sioux Falls uh, for, you know, for, for university or for college. I just would. I mean, uh, it's very safe, very clean, uh, good quality of life, 
Uh, people are South Dakota nice. You got to admit that we're pretty nice. We and uh, so there's that as well as you're going to get one heck of an education if you come here. Um, and, and again, whether it be yes, Augie, or USF University Center, Southeast Tech, or or any of the schools around here, uh, I think you're going to get a really really good education and and it will pay off. Uh, and I think the Augie stats uh, show that show that. You know, if you graduate from here, you're going to get a, a, a good job and, and that education will, will pay off. Uh, but the same thing applies for the other places too. Uh, have your folks visited you since you've been here? Your mom and dad, have they been able to visit you while you've been in school? Mm. No. 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 Okay. So what do you tell them about Sioux Falls? Um, I don't know. I like it. I have been here for one month. Oh, one month? Yeah, only one month. Oh my gosh, well, welcome. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> What's um, you your impressions? I don't know, I think... Snow. You've seen snow? Oh yeah, I like snow. <laughs> I went to... Well, there's, guess what? There's 8 to 12 inches coming uh, oh, in yeah. two days. Yeah, I yeah. know. Okay, okay. Uh, good. <laughs> so I think it, that's good for people like me that are from Colombia, because, you know, in Colombia we don't have snow. A lot of snow, so it's that kind of things are are good, and I think in here it's a very safe place. Thank you. I can walk. I mean, at twelve o'clock at night, and there are some places, for example, in Colombia that yes. I can't do that or I shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, so I think that kind of things are very important. Mm, people are, are very nice, yeah, you are, that's true. Um, I don't know, I think it's a very good city, yeah. How did a you good, pick uh, Augie or Sioux Falls? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, but you're here. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, and we want to keep you here. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, um, um, I, I think it's a it's a city that we are also learning how to embrace diversity more and more. Okay, we're, we're um, uh, and and I think that's good, but it's hard. Change is hard for for really anybody, but I think we're I think we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go, uh, and it's all kinds of diversity, all kinds. It doesn't have to be, you know, the color of our skin. Um, it, it can be other things, too. And uh, so, uh, again, welcome. What are you studying? Um, English. English? Yeah, oh, English. Very good. And uh, ELS. So, yeah. oh, ELS? Yeah. Oh, very good. Perfect. I love it. He's my teacher. Oh, well, very good. Good job. <laughs> well, teach him well. I try. Yeah. You're in. Mom and dad are yeah, relying very on you. Good, yeah, yeah. A very good teacher. Oh, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, others? Anything? You've been filming me the whole time. I love it. Can I ask why? Oh, we're doing like a Facebook Live. Uh, did you catch that? I, I, that? Catch that. If you don't mind, Sioux Falls, I just want to kind of give you a flavor. Um, you're filming me for Facebook Live. Yes, this is for our student association's account. So. Uh, I, how, how times are changing. Uh, and, and I... Um, and, and there's goods in it, and then there's, there's the bads in it. Uh, but it is the way that it is. You know, the way that we communicate with each other nowadays, it's dramatically different than when I, when I went to school. Uh, and every time that I do these listening and learning sessions, I, I'm being filmed. And so I know that there's going to be scrutiny on the things that I say. Uh, but one of the things that I'll try to give you a flavor for is that um, I... When I was running for mayor, I tried to be as open and genuine and as real as I could be. And now that I've been elected the mayor and had the honor to serve, uh, the people of Sioux Falls, they kind of know this by now. I'm just going to say what I truly believe uh, in knowing that it's not going to make everybody happy. Uh, but I could slip up every now and then and do something, and it could really backfire on me. Uh, but it's the risk that you take in if you're going to be a public servant today. Because you are. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much naked wherever I go now. That's the way that it is. 
I know that I'm being filmed or photographed or whatever it would be, and it's just part of the rule. Uh, it is, and, and so, uh, but thank you. Thanks for doing this today. Thank you. Are you the president or vice president of the SA? No, I'm just the director of communications. Don't say just. I mean, you are. You're the director <laughs> of communications. Good job. Thank you. Questions or anything? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Will Bordewike, and I'm from Brookings, South Dakota. Hi, Will. Um, Will? Yes. Thanks, Will. I have a question. You've mentioned uh, a couple times that Sioux Falls has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the yeah. country, which is great and something to be proud of. Um, but with that, I think um, what many community members not, might not realize that the poverty rate, um, I think, is at 13.9%, yeah. and it's trending the opposite direction upward um, compared to the national rate, which has been going downwards. So I just want to kind of pick your brain in terms of how Sioux Falls plans to how Sioux Falls plans to combat or maybe alleviate um, the poverty in this community as it continues to grow in the foreseeable future. Will, good job. And that's what I just, we kind of talked about, the income disparity. Not only, you know, the haves and the have-nots, it, I think it's growing wider and, and wider. Um, one of the things that's happening, Will, is that many folks that are moving into town, okay, uh, they may not already be at the income level that they you know, would hope. Uh, they're leaving Flint, Michigan, uh, or they're, living, they're leaving some of these other areas of the, of the country, uh, and they were either unemployed or really dramatically underemployed, and so now they're coming here. Well, they may not immediately you know, get that perfect job they're looking for, and so yeah, they are starting pretty low um, and are looking for that hand up, whether it be the banquet, the Good Shepherd Center, um, a, a Union Gospel Mission, whatever it would be. Um, here's my answer to that, and, and not everybody's going to agree, but here is my answer. When you do have low unemployment rates, when you do have a bevy of jobs that are out there and you've got limited people to fill them, the natural progression for wages is to go up, and that is happening. The natural progression for benefits is to go up, and that is happening. And then it also improves where you can work or the, or the quality of the work, so that is going up. Um, so that's what I'm encouraging people, just like that person I met at Jackie's today, is I, I encouraged him, I said, I said, well, get out there. There's not a better time to update your resume, to go pound the pavement, shake some hands, do some interviews to try to find that better job. But here's the reality too. Not everybody can just pick up and go interview for that better job. They can't. Uh, but in Sioux Falls, it's a great opportunity to do, to do just that. Um, and again, there's, there's, none of these are simple answers. So I, I don't want to make them appear that they're simple. Every, everybody's individual case, Will, your case is different than, than your case and different than yours, different than mine, um, different than Kofi's, whatever it would be. But I do think that right now there is a great opportunity for people uh, if, if they want to capture it. Um, uh, about two listening and learning sessions ago, I was at Black Sheep Coffee, just right, right uh, down, the, down the street from Augie. And I did say this, I, I did say this, and, and I mean it today, and that is, if you have the ability to work, um, and you're not working, that, that's unacceptable. Um, and if you're relying on government to you know, pay your way, and you have the ability to pay your own way, well then, you should, you should be doing that too. Uh, life is hard, it is. Life is really hard, but you know it, it's how you attack the day uh, that you've been given, how you how you appreciate the day that God has given you, uh, uh, you know how you overcome those obstacles in life that is ultimately going to take you a, a lot a lot further. And so, um, uh, I, I I do want everybody to be successful. Uh, like I said, when I drove by that trailer house today. I couldn't actually even believe that somebody was living there. But not only was it one person, it was a family living there. And I'm the mayor. I want everybody to have safe, 
sanitary and decent housing. And that's not the case in, in, every, in, every, in every place. That's not, you know. Uh, I've, got, I've got their students going to, uh, going to public and private schools and they, their, their teeth hurt them because they haven't had good dental care, maybe ever. And could you imagine what it's like for a, um, a young person or, or, or an older person who's going to school and they've got teeth, they've got tooth pain. I mean, how's that person supposed to study? But because of poverty or because of something going on within that family, they're not, they're not addressing that, that, that dental care need. Uh, and again, Kofi, back to you. My mom wanted me to take care of everybody. My grandma insisted upon it. And yet there are people living in this town of 178,500 that are really, really struggling. And uh, uh, I'm responsible for it. Well, I, I want to, uh, is there another question? And, and if there's not, um, first of all, I, I just want to thank Augie for doing this for uh, the City of Sioux Falls, the listening learning session. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I think the, the citizens of Sioux Falls will enjoy it. And mark my words, they will watch this program and they'll learn from it. Uh, and I think what they sound, found today was uh, uh, there's some young people here, number one, are not only really, really smart, uh, but unbelievably engaged and actually do want to want to make a real difference with the with the days that they've been given. Uh, and so I, I think you've represented Augie well. You certainly have represented your, your age group well. And uh, you're also representing Sioux Falls very, very well, whether you decide to stay here or, or not. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me. And, and make it a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.